I'm Chris, and today I'm looking at this more affordable laptop from a company called BMAX. It is their X14 Pro, a new laptop from them, but with old tech, because it is using here a Ryzen 5, the 3450U. Now that's a quad core with eight threads. It has a power limit of 15 watts. Maximum turbo is 3.5. And it even does have Vega 8 graphics, which isn't too bad when it comes to integrated graphics, even though, yes, it is a dated chip here, being so old. We've got 8 gigabytes of RAM, which unfortunately you cannot upgrade at all. It's soldered onto the motherboard. And then Wi-Fi AC, which also is not upgradable. It does have a 512 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD, which you can easily upgrade because there is a hatch on the bottom of it. You remove two screws and you can simply swap it out and add another one. It is running Windows 10 Pro and the battery on this is 57 watt hours, which is good in my testing for around about five and a half to six hours. Now included in the box, you'll find a power supply. This one is 47 watts and it does have these. So you've got a UK plug, US plug, and they do have an EU one, which I need here, of course. So good that they've got that, the option to have different regions, all with the same power supply. And you'll also find this, which is an instruction manual. That's what we get with the box. Let's have a look at the laptop now. This 14.1 inch laptop weighs about 1.3 kilos. It's 18 millimeters thick. And we have that BMAX logo on the lid here. Now, it looks a little bit like a Decepticons, a Transformers logo, I've always mentioned that, and this top here is made out of brushed alloy metal. Now, I have just cleaned it down, it tends to pick up smudges and fingerprints, but this is the only metal you're going to find on it. The rest of the build is all plastic. So can it be opened up one-handed? It can't with the hinge. The hinge on it, it does feel good, no problems with that. And here is our keyboard, which is backlit, okay? So I have it set on the brightest setting at the moment. By default, it doesn't come on. You need to press function, then F2 for it to come on. You can see when I turn off the lights now that the backlighting on it, it's okay, but it's not what I would call very evenly distributed. You can see around here some of the keys, like the N key there, not as bright as others. So that's just a minor there with the keyboard. It is nice to type on. So we have about one and a half millimeters of travel, the keys, curve in slightly and there's a bit of bounce and flex here but overall it's not too bad and I do like the fact we've got full size arrow keys here and we don't however well we do sorry have on the side here the print screen button but it's the home button which doesn't seem to be there that's the one that is missing so we've got our scroll lock pause insert and home well, that doesn't seem to be there at all, but we've got delete. And the power key has the same resistance to it to the rest of the keys. But I haven't accidentally pressed it now in the three days that I've been using this particular laptop here now at the moment. So all up, it's a good keyboard. It's just plastic, so it doesn't feel super high quality. And the touchpad down here, this one, also plastic, palm rest plastic there. And it does support Windows gestures with it. And overall, it's an okay touchpad, but I wouldn't rate it as amazing. On the right side of the laptop, we do have a micro SD card reader, which is great to see, but it's not a high speed one. So USB 2.0 speeds only, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support, and then one of two USB 3.0 ports. And here is the other one you can see, along with the DC in there for charging and powering this. As mentioned before, it's 47 watts, the power supply, and we do have a status LED, then an HDMI 1.4A. Then our underside, we've got four nice solid rubber feet here and there are some intakes here. Why is that? Well, that's because that Ryzen 5, the 3450U, is fan cooled. So active cooling, little fan in here. There is a screw in the middle, so that's to hold that keyboard down to hopefully get rid of any bounce, but there is a little bit of bounce and flex there. And then this here, an easy access hatch with two screws where you can upgrade the SSD. And then our internals, so there are some hidden screws, you do have to remove the two rear feet in order to access two of them here and another two here. So this is our fan obviously, and that's going to be blowing the hot air out the back, it sucks it in from the bottom, and two copper transfer pipes. Now I'll let you know later on the thermals that I'm able to get out of stressing this particular laptop out. There is a bit of bad news here with upgrades, zero, nothing. 
So you can only just swap out the SSD, but the RAM, which is located right here next to that Ryzen 5, that's soldered on board. So no SODIMM support there, which is unfortunate. And even our wireless card. So that's Wi-Fi AC with Bluetooth 4.2. It's soldered onto the motherboard, so you cannot swap that out for another better Wi-Fi 6 card. Now this is our 57 watt hour battery. So we have three cells, one here, one here, and one here. In the BIOS settings here, you can see that it is all pretty much locked down to us that under the CPU advanced options, we don't have a lot here available to us. Nothing really that useful. So you can't go in and, for example, undervolt it or increase power limits or change and increase the amount of RAM dedicated to the Vega 8 graphics. Simply can't really do that at all. It's pretty much fully locked down with just a few little settings in there like secure boot and boot order and those kind of things, which are typical. And our screen here, so the top bezel and the bottom are rather large. The left and right bezels aren't too bad and they're pretty standard for a laptop like this in a more affordable category, you could say. So it's an IPS, full HD resolution, so that's 1080p, and we do have with it anti-glare coating on it, which is great. However, the first thing I noticed when I took it out of the box is it's dull. It's a dull screen, and when I measured it with my meter, I wasn't that shocked to find out that it's only outputting, at best, about 130 nits. No, that's not an error. 130 nits only. I am currently on the maximum brightness setting, and that's it. That's all you're going to get with the brightness, and when you look at the desktop, yeah, it's not super bright. So indoor use, it's okay. And the coverage from it, they do claim 100% sRGB. We've got 95% there, which is good. NTSC is 71%. Adobe RGB is 74%. And then P3, that is 77%. So it's not that bad, the color coverage we've got with it, the gamut. It's just really, for me, that brightness. It's dull. It needs to be brighter. Now over to Windows. Now I haven't shown you the BIOS because everything's locked down to us. There's no advanced settings that we can change with the chipset. So our chipset is that Ryzen 5. It is the 3450U. Now this is a 12 nanometer chip, 15 watt. It has four cores, 18 threads, maximum turbos, 3.5 gigahertz. And the wireless card, this here you can see is a Realtek one. So it's wireless AC. And you'll see that my signal strength, even though I'm not too far away from my router, is not actually that great. So I'm not able to get really fast speeds through this. So I'm seeing around 200 and 250 megabits per second only through this, and it should actually be a little bit better than that. So a bit disappointing there with the wireless. It should really have wireless AX. That, of course, would have been a lot better. So it ships with Windows 10 Pro, sorry, home that you can see right now that we are running, and you get 429 gigabytes free. Well, a little bit more than that, actually, because I've just got a couple of apps and things installed. So you see Windows 10 Pro, sorry, I'll just correct myself on that. I keep getting confused there, but it is Pro that it ships with. Now you can upgrade it to Windows 10 11 if you wanted to do so. Our speeds of that SSD, they are okay. Uh, we do have plenty of free space as well with it. It's only SATA 3, so if it was PCIe 3.0 spec, you'd get, of course, about three times faster than this. In fact, over that. But for SATA 3, it's, it's okay. Not the fastest I have seen, but it's an all right kind of speed there that we do have out of this. So I won't focus a lot on benchmarks because it is basically, a, well, low end now when you take a look at these scores. Geekbench 5 score here you can see is 815, and multi-core score there, 2,000. 844 so not exactly super powerful or anything like that but for light office kind of tasks light workloads it's all right now i do have cinebench r23 also ran that and we get close to 2600 points again it could actually be better for this chipset and i have seen better out of this chipset and why is that so what's restricting the performance here why is it not performing as good as it could well, it's not the power limit, it's this here. When you take a look at the RAM speeds, it is only running at 1866. Now, it should be at the maximum speed supported by this Ryzen 5, which is 2.4 gigahertz. So we are missing out on some RAM bandwidth that's affecting the performance a little bit there. And that is the reasoning behind it because they just haven't used a faster RAM speed. And as I showed you with the internals, unfortunately that RAM is not upgradable.
the laptop will run Windows 11, not a problem. As you can see, I now have Windows 11. It's running on it. No issues there. Updates are working fine. And I've installed all the latest AMD drivers. Now, things like spreadsheets and documents. This is a large document file here with 83 pages. It's fast. It's good for these kind of tasks, all right? So light computing, documents, spreadsheets, no issue there with that. Now, I do have some demanding video files here. This is the Sony Swordsmiths one, which is 4K60. We'll just run that now and see how it's going to perform. So slow to load in. Okay, the Vega 8 graphics here have, is handling this. And that's a lot slower than I expected. But it does look to be running. There we go. Yes, that's running at 60 frames per second. And it's looking great. So that's good. It was just a little slow to start there. Now my jellyfish test sample. This is 140 megabits per second. 10 bit 4K, 30 frames per second. Same thing for some reason here with Windows 11. It is taking a lot longer to initially load in. But once it's going, the Vega 8 graphics can handle demanding playback of these files to decode those, which is good. That's, that's great performance there out of video files, which are demanding ones, 4K. Now, a bit of Chrome performance here, so I'm just going to search cats there. And no, I haven't actually searched this before. I'll just change it to English too. And we'll get a few videos open of this, but the performance here for this Ryzen 5 is pretty good. So these kind of tasks, which are very light, it's not an issue for it to load everything up. You can have about 10 tabs, 13, 15 tabs open, and then you start to run into memory issues, especially with Chrome. We've only got the eight gigabytes of RAM, and as I pointed out before, that you cannot actually expand upon that. So this all loads in pretty quick, and the scrolling speeds and everything here are looking good. I mean, it does have eight threads in total, those four cores, and up to 3.5 gigahertz. So that's plenty fast enough there, and just going through those tabs all very quick. So I will open here a 4K demo because they sometimes these, even this spec, can choke a little bit on more demanding streaming here. So 4K, this is the one I normally do, the Sony one. So I'll just mute that so we don't have to listen to it. Make sure I've got it set in 4K. And enable the stats. Now I do have a lot going on in the background there. So just close up all of those tabs there. So that was quick enough to move all of that. And it seems to be dropping only one frame, but of course I don't even have it full screen. So now it's full screen. One frame has dropped. This remember is in Chrome. So on edge the performance will actually be a little bit better, but that's looking very good. So the Vega 8 graphics can handle 4K here with no drop frames per second. So 4K, that's 30 frames per second. So what I'll do is test 4K60 because that's the one that is very demanding there, 4K60 demo. Okay, and this will probably end up dropping a few frames. I'm just skipping ahead. And my internet is not the fastest here, so it's taking a little bit. Okay, so two drop, drops frames there. And it's steadily dropping frames, slowly, you can see. Although, hey, look at that, nine, yep, yeah, all right. So just now and then it's dropping a frame, which is not actually too, ooh, a lot of drop frames just then and again. So that is struggling a little bit there. It's having a bit of trouble, and my internet connection there with 4K 60 frames per second streaming. So 30 is fine, but 4K 60 can get a little bit laggy. And the webcam now on the X14 Pro. It's only 720p and the frame rate about 20 frames per second. There is a bit of choppy and lagginess to it and quite a bit of grain. But at least we do have a webcam on board here with the X14 Pro. Audio performance now from the X14 Pro. As I showed you the internals, we just have that small little speaker bar that's up here and there's no stereo separation. The speakers for me are poor, they're not amazing. They are at least useful, you can still hear videos, but if you're in a loud environment, then you will struggle to hear them. Here's a sample of them, and I'll set them to 100% volume, which it's already on, just to give you an idea of what you can expect out of the X14 Pro.
gaming performance now. So Vega 8 graphics does a lot better than the older generations of Intel HD that we would have if this was not AMD. So this is 1080p on the lowest possible visuals with Counter-Strike. It's a very light old game and good to see we're getting at least 60 frames per second here. Now I'll just see how far I can go without getting shot or killed in two seconds. Oh, the smoke's a little bit laggy there. You can see down to just down to almost 40 frames per second. And oh, I didn't even see it. Wow. No, it completely filled me. It's smoke. Gone. So you can see that frame rate did get down to, well, into the upper 30s there, but it's still not bad. So you can do a bit of light gaming on the side with these older titles. Thermals now, so they are very good on the X14 Pro. It does not go over 70 degrees Celsius, and it will maximum the power that it will pull here, about 24 watts on the chipset. That's the total package power, so the GPU and the CPU. So it's not really pulling a lot there. You could probably increase the wattage if there's ways to do that, but through the BIOS you can't because it's completely locked out to us. But at least these temperatures look good. And what about fan noise? You do hear it, okay? The fan's there, it's on most of the time, especially when you have it plugged in, you'll constantly hear the fan, which is slightly annoying. It's not that loud, and I wouldn't call it that offensive, and if you do run it on the battery, then you normally don't hear the fan then. Now, battery life, it's not amazing in this. You are looking at just over about six hours with light use is all I'm able to squeeze out of it, and that's using a brightness set at about 30%, which is rather dull. So the screen is the biggest complaint from me from this brand here, BMAX, is why on earth did they put such a dull screen in it? It's only just getting over 120 nits. I did a double take when I measured it and thought, wow, it can't be that bad. I thought it was about 200 nits, but because of the anti-glare coating on it, it does fare quite well indoors. As you can see right now, you can still make it out, you can read it fine, but if you're in a bright environment, you're going to find the screen to be dull, so that's not good. Even though it does have Adobe 74% RGB coverage and 95% sRGB, which isn't bad for a laptop like this. So it is mostly plastic, the build quality. The touchpad, I don't like. It's a bad touchpad because the cursor and finer movements tends to jump around and twitch all over the place, so not really that good at all barely usable. The keyboard is nice to type on. There's a little bit of flex and bounce as I pointed out. It is backlit and we can easily swap over and add another SSD. But we have all old generation tech here. So we've got Wi-Fi 5, SATA 3 and a three generation old AMD Ryzen 5. Now the Ryzen 5 that's in this it's four cores, quad core with eight threads and it does have Vega 8 graphics so it's not bad. So it is good for video, daily kind of just light computing. So documents, spreadsheets, Chrome, and a bit of very light gaming like Counter-Strike that I showed you. So older titles will be playable on this with low resolution, low settings, but you know, it's not really designed for gaming at all. So that's really what a laptop like this is good at, is just light kind of stuff. It wouldn't do anything demanding on this at all. Now the price of it. With a coupon discount, you can get, then pick it up for 439 US dollars, which I think is, it's a bit of an ask really when you factor in all that I've just covered here, especially with that dull screen and we are running older kind of tech here. So no doubt they're picking up those chips from AMD quite cheap. So there we go, that's the full story. Now you know all the ins and outs, the pros and cons of a more affordable laptop like this the BMAX X14 Pro. Thanks a lot for watching my review.